Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back. So today I'm gonna to show you guys three methods that you can use to connect your PS5 and PS4 to a VPN effectively. Um, now the easiest method Obviously, it's by using any other router that's compatible with a good VPN. Um, now, I'll talk about these VPNs briefly at the end of the video, so you can stick around until then, um, and you can figure out which one could be the best choice for you. And if you wanna go straight to reviews or discounts, you'll find it all in the description. Okay, so the first method, again, is by simply just getting a uh, router that is compatible with a VPN, or something like the Airco, for example, which has ExpressVPN pre-installed into it, so you can just plug and play and i'll give you guys this link as well in case you end up being interested in the airco so besides that besides the router uh, method you can use a very effective method which is called usb tethering now you can do this both on ios and android devices so first thing you want to do is download the vpn on your device from whatever app store now i would definitely recommend that you purchase the vpn from the website itself and again the link below will give you a discount once you've purchased the plan you can download and install the vpn whether on your pc or your mobile phone in this case we're talking about the mobile phone so once you've downloaded the vpn simply connect to a device now because this is in the context of gaming i would recommend that you connect to the vpn server that's closest to your game server that way you'll be close closing the gap as far as distance between the two servers and you can potentially get ping that's even better than your base ping, believe it or not. Uh, but you must fulfill that condition. So once you've connected to your VPN on your mobile device, go to your mobile device and look up USB tether okay or tethering and you'll find the option there so basically turn it on after you've plugged it into your ps4 you want to plug it into your ps4 or ps5 just regular usb right from your phone to your uh ps4 or ps5's usb port and your phone will recognize that there's a device that's connected and you can go ahead and enable the usb tethering you'll know what to do once you plug it in uh and that's basically it this is the second easiest way, I would say, of doing it. Um, and the cool thing about it is that you won't need uh, a router for this because you're effectively using your phone as a router. But the problem with that is that you're gonna have to, you know, use your phone as a router. So you're probably not gonna be able to use your phone as much or uh, maybe make calls that might disconnect the connection. So yeah, you're gonna have to just watch out for that because every time you make a call, like a regular call, uh, the internet will disconnect and therefore your PS4 or PS5 will also get disconnected. So you just wanna watch out for that. Now, the third method is by using your computer as a router. So you're gonna to have to get an ethernet cable and connect one end in your computer and the other end in your PS4 or PS5. Then you wanna to go to control panel on your uh, computer and then go to network and internet, and then go to network and sharing center and change the adapter settings. Okay, so once we get here, you're gonna notice a driver and you wanna click on the driver. By the way, this is it. So as you can tell, network cable unplugged. And so we're gonna go ahead and turn it on and it just becomes enabled. Okay, so from here, you wanna right click, go to properties. And again, at this point, you have one end connected to your PS4 and another end connected to your PS5. Your computer can be connected uh, via Ethernet to your router or via Wi-Fi connection, whatever you prefer or whatever you have available. Of course, wired connection will always be better. OK, from here, we're going to go to sharing and allow other network users to connect through this computer's Internet connection and then click the drop down menu right here. And from here, you want to pick what's giving you Internet. In this case, my internet source is right here, Studio Ethernet. So I'll just pick Ethernet and click OK. Now, I don't have my PS4 connected or anything like that, uh, so it's not going to work for me, but it should be working for you. And from there, just click OK and you should be fine. And of course, this is not going to work for me. Again, I don't have the setup plugged in right now, but this is essentially how you can get it done. Now, as far as which VPN could be the best choice for you and your situation, well, this is where it could be either up to preference or what you're willing to pay. ExpressVPN is going to be the best of the best overall. I'd say it's the most reliable and consistent. I've tried it with a bunch of games, including Elden Ring, Tekken, Call of Duty, Rainbow Six. It worked perfectly fine. Again, all you need to do is connect to the 
VPN server that is closest to your game server. So you want to find out where your game server is and connect to the VPN server that's closest to it. Uh, so ExpressVPN, I would say it's the best of the best overall as far as consistency. Uh, it's very easy to use. It's very reliable. They all, of course, work with streaming and torrenting and gaming. But this is just my two cents on ExpressVPN. It's my personal choice. And as far as privacy and a no logs policy, I'd say ExpressVPN is arguably the best. Now, NordVPN is going to be the most well-rounded VPN that offers a whole bunch of bonus features for a very reasonable price. And you still get all the quality features and performance. Now, Surfshark is going to be the best budget option that gets the job done at the cheapest possible cost without sacrificing sacrificing any of the necessary security features that you would normally get with more premium VPNs like Nord and Express, but you're still getting that with Surfshark at a cheaper price, and you'll be able to secure up to an unlimited number of devices with just a single subscription. So this is a very unique feature, and NordVPN only allows for six, whereas Express allows for up to eight. So yeah, it all depends on what you're looking for. Either way, you'll find links to pricing discounts in the description down below in case you're interested, and you will also find the full reviews if you'd like to learn a little bit more about them. Besides that, Calm below if you have any questions i'll be happy to answer all of them like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and stay up to date with everything vpns and cybersecurity thank you guys very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one have a wonderful day